He is quite simply, I think, Billy, the perfect amateur photographer. And his approach to photography, I believe, is the antidote to the modern obsession with social validation. Amateur photography is dead. Or at least that's what the title of a recent article I read on the website Emulsif boldly stated. The author claimed that amateur photography has ceased to be simply a record of us documenting our lives and the things that capture our enthusiasm, created for the sole purpose of just saying, and this is me and who I am. And that rather, over the past decade or so, it has metamorphosed into a weird hybrid of professional photography where, for most people, they are selling themselves, a sort of social currency, if you will. Why do we photograph? Professionals do it because it's their livelihood. And amateur photographers seem to have forgotten why. And that's the real issue. Amateur photography isn't dead. It just smells funny. And it's time to remember why we turned to photography in the first place. The pure joy of taking a photo for the sole purpose of just taking a photo. We're going to rediscover this joy that you had through the eyes of the most perfect amateur photographer of all time, Jacques Henry Lutrigue. How's it, how's it? Since I started this channel, there's been a lot of interest shown in, in my own photography. And the truth is, at least for my personal photography, I don't really show very much of it online. I, I have a, a half-baked Instagram account, which is primarily for my studio photography. I used to have a few images on, on Tumblr, and outside of those things, not really much else online. In previous videos, and, and if you're interested in seeing them and you haven't already, I'll link for you at the end of the video, I put forth the idea that you should create photography that pleases yourself first and foremost. And in this video, we're going to explore why we are creating those images to start with. What, what is their purpose? Have they got one at all? You know, are we required to promote our photography across as many platforms as possible in the modern world in pursuit of likes? Can you be a successful photographer if no one ever sees your photographs? I want to reset your passion and reconnect you to why you first picked up a camera. And I thought the best person to help me with this is Jacques-Henri Lutrigue, a French photographer who started taking photographs as a young child in the early years of the 20th century. Now, if you look up amateur photographers in the dictionary, you're going to see a picture of Lutrigue. He is, quite simply, I think, Billy, the perfect amateur photographer. And his approach to photography, I believe, is the antidote to the modern obsession with social validation. Latrigue was given his first camera at the age of seven. Now, naturally, as a young boy, he photographs the things that, in, that interest him. You know, his images are full of enthusiasm. They're full of whimsy and, and family just being, well, just a family. There's no greater purpose to his photographs than simply pointing the camera tripping the shutter, and, and in his own words, capturing the most endearing moments of his life. Now, I'm sure a lot of us can, can understand and empathize with this vibe of, of things. You know, this magical box in our hands that through some mystical process has created an image. And, and once that image was taken, without thought of how it may be used later on to stroke our egos or to, or to gain us fame, we moved on to the next image, and the next, and the next, and the next. The process itself was enough to keep us enthralled. This is where we need to be, again, as amateur photographers, in this, this place of wonder, where we care less. In fact, we don't care at all about where this photograph may end up, and just give ourselves over to the moment. There's too much emphasis in the modern world, at least as far as I'm concerned, on this idea that somehow we are owed something in return for being creative. That that photograph over there, that one on the frame next to us, got so many more likes and, and yet my photograph is far better and therefore far deserving of more praise. You know, a great person once said that comparison is the thief of joy and I believe that has never been more true than the, the world of online photo one-upmanship. Intrigue almost again from the beginning of his career, placed his photographs in albums. Not portfolio cases designed to show off his work, but large albums, simply for his own, and, and to a lesser extent, his family's enjoyment. Despite the fact that I used the word family, these weren't, he said, 
family albums, but rather they were himself in, in picture form. You know, the album was him and everything he loved and everything that interested Latrigue. He was the album and the album was Latrigue. The photographs were taken, they were developed, lovingly printed and, and carefully placed in the albums and then, well, nothing really. He just put them in an album and, and that, that was it. If Latrique didn't do anything with his photographs, then why did he take them in the first place? I'm a big fan of cooking analogies in photography, and rather happily, Latrique has used a cooking analogy to explain why he took photographs. He said, cooks pick cherries to make jam and to eat the jam. He said, I am a cook who likes to pick cherries, make the jam, but I like to eat fresh fruit. When pressed about the point of making jam at all, Latrique said that at first he used to pretend that he'd taken a photograph of something he enjoyed, but it, it, the process wasn't quite the same. And besides, he hated seeing all of those cherries go to waste. Such a simple concept, nothing grand or attention seeking. No worry about how this image or the next is going to be received. Just his own eyes roaming unhindered and seeking the next cherry to photograph. We are all more than able of becoming the photographers we feel we are capable of being. The basic skills, they'll help us get us started. Though The real key to unlocking that potential is understanding why we feel this urge to create photographs in the first place. At the end of this video, I'll put up two playlists for you to enjoy. One is about great photographers like Latrigue who can teach us so much about being photographers. And the other is devoted to helping you feel more relaxed and more comfortable about creating images in this noisy, noisy world that is dominated by social media. They sound like, you know, the end of those choose your own adventure books where you have two choices. Well, at the end of this, this video, you'll have two choices. I know you're going to love both options. If there were no plans beyond this idea of, of picking cherries for Latrigue's photography, then how was it that somebody like Richard Avedon, that legendary American photographer, saw Latrigue's work on display at the Museum of Modern Art in the mid-60s and wrote to Jacques Henry Latrigue and said that it was one of the most moving experiences of his life and that, that the photographs on display had brought me into Latrigue's world and said, after all, isn't that the purpose of art? Much like Vivian Mayer, in the mid 2010s, Latrigue's photography was only really discovered um, in his later life. You know, when he was age 69, an agent happened to come across one of his albums. I'm not sure exactly the chain of events, but Latrigue spent his life as a working painter. It's quite possible that he had some sort of connection there, and, and there was a, a happy coincidence that this, this agent happened to see some of these, this work of personal photographs. And it set forth a chain of events that led to this MoMA show. And, Latrigue's exposure in Life magazine. Despite, because of this, Latrigue having some commercial work and doing commercial jobs for people, he remained ever much the amateur. And he continued to be humble and modest about his photography, creating work simply for the love of creating it. When pressed about why one of his most famous photographs was considered to be great, he simply said, for that, you must ask the collectors. For this photograph next to it is equally as good. I think it would be missing the point here to say that ultimately your goal is to become famous and well known and, and just, just be humble in the meantime and make your work in secret and, and play for luck to turn our head our way. Now, neither Mayor Lord Nutrigue or countless others whom Fortune didn't fancy. I think harbored any desire to be a famous photographer. They simply created their photography with a goal just to create photography. Latrigue's photography isn't successful because it was exhibited at MoMA or it moved Richard Avedon to write a letter. It's successful because he approached it like an amateur, an amateur in the truest sense of the word. He created his photography for the love of the process. And it's this legacy that he has left with us. Within his photographs, it always feels like it's springtime, a European springtime, but a springtime nevertheless. You know, looking at his images, we can put ourselves in his shoes to feel what he felt, to experience the world as he did. The album is Latrigue and Latrigue is the album. Now your photography before anything else 
should be created from this state of mind and this place of being. No goal beyond doing something for you. If no other person other than yourself ever sees your photography, so long as the act of taking a photograph of recording it makes you happy, then your photography will be a success. The amateur photographer isn't dead. Rather they, well we, for, although technically I'm a, a kind of professional, but at heart I'm still very much an amateur, just we've simply lost our way a bit. Despite having the platforms available to us to show off our photography far and wide, we don't have to. There's nothing wrong with not showing your photography off to the whole world if you don't want to. The Trigg's photography is wonderful because it wasn't created for you. It wasn't created for me or anybody else but the photographer. He was unquestionably talented. He was enthusiastic and extremely prolific. But first and foremost though, he was an amateur. The photography is genuine. I want you to be an amateur for as long as you can. Learn, improve, evolve, but do so for yourself, not as some method of getting likes from people who don't know you and don't really care about you. I mentioned earlier there's two choices. Well, click on the playlist you can see up on the screen. The top one is about learning to see photographically, and the bottom one features more great photographers for you to discover and learn from. Thanks ever so much for being here today, and I look forward again to seeing you soon.